Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard 2022 deck preparing for the upcoming rotation and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, today we're building a deck around a Mordenkainen. The 6 mana Planeswalker from Forgotten Realms starts out at 5 loyalty and the plus 2 lets us draw 2 cards and then put a card from our hand on the bottom of our library. The minus 2 is what we're most interested in, lets us create a blue dog illusion creature token with power and toughness each equal to twice the number of cards in our hand, so it can turn into a very large threat. And then the minus 10 is pretty fun if we can get to it, lets us exchange our hand and library, and then we shuffle and we get an emblem saying we don't have a maximum hand size, so a great combo if we have any dog illusions in play already. Then taking a look at the rest of the deck, you may have noticed we have a bit of a snow theme with 26 snow lands in the mana base, including 22 snow covered islands and 4 copies of Faceless Haven which can turn into a 4-3 creature. Then at 1 mana we've got the full playset of Ascendant Spirit, a 1-1 snow creature spirit that for 2 snow mana can turn into a 2-3, subsequently for 3 snow mana turns into a 4-4 flyer, and finally for 4 snow mana gets 2 plus on plus 1 counters, and says whenever this creature deals combat damage to a player we draw a card, and that last ability we can potentially activate multiple times to get multiple plus on plus 1 counters, and then if we hit the opponent we get to draw multiple cards. So Ascendant Spirit's a great card, we can play it early, keep up our mana during the opponent's turn to potentially keep up our instant speed spells, and if the opponent doesn't play into them, we can still use our mana in a useful manner by leveling up Ascendant Spirit, which will eventually win us the game. Then we also have the full playset of Frost Augur, a 1 mana 1 2 snow creature human wizard that for snow mana can tap to look at the top card of our library. If it's a snow card, we may reveal it and put it into our hand. And our deck has about 40 snow cards in it, so we've got a pretty good chance of hitting a snow permanent, which also includes our lands, of course. So Frost Augur can potentially draw a card every turn at the cost of just 1 mana. Then at 2 mana we've got the full playset of Into the Royal, which is an instant that can return target non-land permanent to its owner's hand, can also kick it for 2 additional mana, in which case we get to draw a card. And at 3 mana we've got another bounce spell in the form of Divine by Zero, which can return target spell or permanent with mana value 1 or greater to its owner's hand, and we get to learn. So Divine by Zero is also a semi-counter spell, as it can bounce something that's on the stack, which is sometimes beneficial over bouncing something that's already in play, to prevent any enter the battlefield abilities from happening. And then learning means we get to grab a lesson out of the sideboard. In best of one we get a 7 card sideboard. And in this case our lessons include 2 copies of environmental sciences to search up a basic land and gain 2 life. We've got a teachings of the archaics which can help us draw cards if we have fewer cards in hand than the opponent. Introduction to prophecy, scry 2 and draw a card. We've got introduction to annihilation as a 5 mana exile based removal spell that lets the opponent draw a card. And finally, two copies of Mascot Exhibition as an additional win condition generating three different creature tokens. Then we also have the full playset of a Replicating Ring, which is a snow artifact, so we can also find it with Frost Augur, and then taps for one mana of any color, and that's also going to be snow mana, so we can use that to potentially still play Ascendant Spirit or Frost Augur, or we can activate a Frost Augur if we had one in play already, so that's the thing I like about Replicating Ring in this deck, besides ramping us into our more expensive spells like our Planeswalker, we also have plenty of one mana plays we can still make after casting the Replicating Ring, and make use of the fact that we can tap our artifact for mana the turn it comes into play. And then at the beginning of our upkeep we can put a knight counter on replicating ring, and then if it has 8 or more counters on it we remove all of them and create 8 colorless snow artifact tokens named replicated ring that can also tap for 1 mana of any color. So great if we have something like ascendant spirit in play to sink all that mana into. Then we also have a few card draw effects with two copies of Behold the Multiverse, which we can first foretell for two mana and then cast it for just one and a blue later and scry two and draw two. And then we also have two copies of Graven Lore as a snow instant that lets us scry X where X is the amount of snow mana spent to cast it and then draw three cards. So we'll get to scry five and draw three, which is a very powerful effect and great in combination with Mordekainen. And then at 4 mana, one of our better tools against aggressive decks is Tempted by the Auric, a sorcery that for each opponent we gain control of up to one target creature or planeswalker that player controls with mana value 3 or less, so we just get to steal the opponent's best creature that fits that criteria. 
and then topping off our curve besides Mordekainen we also have three copies of Alrun's Epiphany which we can foretell for two mana early in the game and then cast for six mana later and then we get to create two 1-1 one, one blue bird creature tokens with flying and we get to take an extra turn after this one so also very powerful if we have an active planeswalker in play so if we take a look at our curve and consider our foretell cards our curve looks a little bit better as we have more things we can do on turn two and then our mana base we discussed includes four copies of Faceless Haven as well. Very important in control matchups. So that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand seems fine. Turn one Fireblade Charger. Alright, so... Next turn, probably leveling up Ascendant Spirits. Is your opponent a goblin aggro deck or maybe an equipment deck? Alright, Frostbite deals with our spirit. So we'll still have Into the Royal as an option, or we can foretell Epiphany. Do we think we're gonna bounce something? Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm probably not that likely to cast into the royal unkicked. Now instead we can go divide by zero into a kicked into the royal. Goblin construct from relic robbers, pretty effective though. So we'll pass it back and then bounce a robber before it hits us again. Javelinier is fine. And what do we want to learn for? Could just be environmental sciences. Can gain a bit of life back as well. Could also bounce the goblin construct here. But I probably need to keep into the royal for relic robber. We also have Faceless Haven as a blocker now, which could technically uh, help out, although another Frostbite would be quite punishing. So I think we gotta go with the Bounce Spell. So, could go Replicating Ring into Divide by Zero. This Relic Robber has been bounced a few times. And then now I can get Mascot Exhibition. Opponent just passes with 4 mana up. Maybe they've got some burn spells, who knows. So, could go for Mordekainen, make a dog, which is going to be relatively large. The more mana efficient play would be Exhibition. And then next turn I can Sciences plus a 6 drop. Yeah, that might be better. Pair of goblins making two one ones. And that makes sense. So another pair of goblins could be quite scary. Bone and smashes. So I imagine they have frostbite to finish off my 4 4 if I block. But so be it. Gonna make him use it. And then. I guess we just want to trade a bunch. 
This deals one damage to a creature blocking it. So I don't want to block the charger because that would finish off my 3-2 too easily. Yeah, this looks okay. So we're at four. And it's going to be a shock on our face. Uh-oh. So we go to one. Do you have sciences to gain two? And then I can still take my extra turn. Otherwise I would have died in the extra turn to the uh, construct. Get to attack for seven. And now I could animate Faceless Haven, hit him for 13 exactly. All right. That was a close one. Sadly, didn't get to cast Mordekainen, but uh, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, and the sand seems fine. Turn on Augur, turn two. Probably just going to foretell Behold. And then next turn I'll have the option of Divide by Zero or Cast Behold, Activate Augur. So I'll pass it back. And we can maybe steal a creature that shows up here. Put onto Black Green Sacrifice deck. Take one. Alright, another attempted on top. Probably don't need a second one. Doesn't seem like the matchup for it. Opponent's maybe gonna top off their curve with a skeletal swarming. Alright, they do appear to be Sultai, I guess I could have noticed here. So I don't really need Tempted. Divide by zero is okay, but I'm probably better off trying to find one of our curve toppers. And lands are still fine. Three lands is a bit much. Alright, we'll pass, and then we can divide Activate, or Faceless Haven could uh, turn into a creature as well. Take one again. And Baleful Mastery trying to take out Frost Augur. Let's see what's on top of land. Could bounce the Mastery back to their hands to get an extra use out of it. Which uh, is reasonable. And then get Mascot Exhibition probably. Pretty close to casting it. Alternatively, could go for Introduction to Prophecy and then go digging for one of our author win conditions. I'll take a mascot. Alright, Epiphany's good. So I could activate Faceless Haven, hit for four, and then with a the Vigilant Haven we can still foretell Epiphany. Although I kind of want to play the Exhibition before taking my extra turn if possible. Nothing I really want to steal at the moment. Could also animate Haven and then activate Augur. Although it's more mana efficient to use the Epiphany. Opponent jumping. Maybe they've got a village rights. Sure. Uh, 
and we'll foretell. There's a binding to take care of Frost Augur. Yeah, we could Epiphany. And then next turn, Exhibition. It's not all that exciting, since we don't get to connect with our uh, Mascot Exhibition tokens in the extra turn. But it is a more efficient use of our mana. If they cast something expensive, we can bounce it. Ooh, blood on the snow. That wasn't really on my radar. But uh, yeah, pretty effective here. Another Tempted. Well, stealing Eye Twitch isn't all that bad, because if it dies we still get to grab another Exhibition. So I guess it's fine to go for it. And then might as well hit with Haven. Opponent gets their own exhibition. Can always steal the 4-4 token and bounce another one. So if I steal the 4-4, I could attack with Haven and then Pay two mana for an unkicked into the royal to bounce the three two. Doesn't sound all that exciting, so I think we're just going to uh, steal the four four and pass with kicked into the royal available. Opponent's going to try to use their teachings. Could also deny them the card draw potentially. Right, so four mana mastery, that works. So won't be able to deny the card draw here either way. So that resolves. Another Haven's good. So that can animate an attack. Probably still keep Eye Twitch back. Can also jump a large Lair of the Hydra. So this would be a good spot to find Mordekainen. Ascendant Spirit can also level up all the way. Right, Professor Onyx is a good one. Really fight me? <laughs> we do have double haven to pressure the planeswalker. Let's go digging. So hopefully we can take her out. I think we send all of them at Onyx. That way, even if they kill Haven, it still dies. Uh, just a Lair of the Hydra to ambush my Frost Augur. Could bounce Rome Frost Augur to save it. Mm, 
which might be worth it. And then we can still replay it. Spider Queen. Okay. Another Haven. So what's the plan now? Can send Haven and my two other creatures at Spider Queen. How much mana do I have? Yeah, we'll still have enough to cast Epiphany. Taking out Spider Queen does seem pretty important. I guess they still have Lair of the Hydra that we need to worry about, so that can turn into a 4-4. So we'd have to double Animate Haven. It's a lot of resources to kill Spider Queen, they're gonna get to kill my Augur for free with their Lair. So maybe we don't send Augur and just send Double Haven Eye Twitch. So it doesn't look like they're animating the lair. They let Spider Queen go. You win this round, but I'll be Activate Augur. Tempted on top, not bad. And then we can still foretell. And pass it back. So we're not that to Lair of the Hydra here, although they're getting close. Yeah, I think they're one damage short of killing us with Lair. Take 14. Okay, so... Can steal a spider, can epiphany. I guess we can do some of this second main as well to use a vigilant haven. So let's see, I need six mana. So that still leaves enough for tempted. But I won't be able to do anything else. Double checking. Yeah, so I won't be able to activate augur either. So might as well attack with it. And then we might have 13 on the way back here. Yeah, as our opponent packs it in, we can activate triple Faceless Haven, that's 12 by itself, and our opponent should be done on the way back. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a nice opening hand, double Frost Augur, and then a Replicating Ring to ramp into Mordekainen. Let's see what we're up against. Swamp. So Augur activates Augur. And hope to hit a couple land drops. Opponent on a black white angel deck. So into the Royal pretty effective against Retribution, which makes a 4-4 Angel token. And perhaps Starnheim Unleashed. For now it's Youthful Valkyrie into Righteous Valkyrie. Alright, Graven Lore is not bad. Although I do need lands, there we go. And... Probably gonna end up going for Into the Royal plus activate Frost Augur. 
but we can wait for them to put something on the stack. A Legion Angel. Alright, so do we want to activate Augur first or after kicking here? It's pretty much completely random. Let's activate first. Ah, should have waited. So our opponent's going to get a steady stream of Legion Angels. So Mordekainen's going to be difficult to protect as we fail to hit our land drop. Can bounce something with Divide by Zero. Or into the Royal, probably going to keep digging with Augur. Alright, Haven. And then... I guess we could pass a turn... Might have to start making large dog tokens to just uh, try and outrace the opponent somehow. And replace a righteous Valkyrie. That resolves. And then probably bounce Legion Angel here over Youthful Valkyrie, since that they can replay for two mana. And then go for Kicked into the Royal, activate Augur. Alright, come on, land. That's good. So we have seven mana available. Could play Mordekainen just to make a dog. In the hopes of uh, next turn casting Epiphany and being able to start attacking with it. Although there's a non-zero chance our opponent can just kill us here if they play another Righteous Valkyrie and get up to 27. So it's not without risk. But my alternative also doesn't look great. So we'll make a large dog, pass it back. And the Frost Augers are doing a good job of uh, keeping our hand nice and full. Alright, there's a second Righteous Valkyrie, so if they have another 2 mana Angel we could be dead. But they didn't have one last turn, so doesn't look to be the case. Opponent's just going to ignore our Planeswalker. Alright. So don't want to play our land yet. Just attack for 14. I guess we can plus first, but I'm probably going to make another dog. Yeah, let's uh, hit for 14. And the opponent's decision of not killing our Planeswalker might come back to bite him. As we get to Epiphany, take an extra turn. And then don't even have to play out my land. Can just swing with the two dogs. One of them's gonna be lethal. Oof. Yeah, it looked kinda sketchy, but uh, some uncontested dogs and extra turns with Epiphany got the job done. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Spirit, turn two, level it up. Turn three, replicating ring, play another one. Or turn two, we could decide to foretell Epiphany. Although I kind of like leveling up. Sentinel. And then... Might as well attack, since they're probably going to tap Sentinel for mana anyway. The 
depending on the situation, it could also be correct to just level up once again. Opponent black green. Your eventual game plan is going to be to attack with some flying ascendant spirits. Uh, shambling ghasts. So could attack, or we could leave spirit back. Kind of like being aggressive. And then just hit for two, start ramping into Epiphany. So next turn I can play Ring and still make this a 4-4. We are exposing a Sun Spirit to the minus one, minus one from Shambling Ghast if they can sacrifice it. Another Innkeeper. And take two. Into the Royal gives us a bit of interaction. So we can play Ring. And then do I attack with Ascendant Spirit is a question. Would have to level it up before attacking. Might be better off just passing with all my options available between Into the Royal and the various level ups. Alright, there's a Mask with Nexus, so we're familiar with this deck. If Magda shows up, we can bounce Nexus in response. Opponent just passes a turn, so. Turn this into a 4 4 flyer. And then land would be nice. Alright, so we get to cast Epiphany now. Although I could wait to level up even further. I can make Ascendant Spirit a 2 3, make this have 2 plus 1 counters before going for the combo. And I get to keep up into the Royal in case the Skeletal Swarming shows up. Could just threaten a level up here, still play kicked into the royal. Yeah, I guess we can attack with both here. See what they do. Alright, so we'll level up once. And it's going to be a deadly dispute, sacking the ghast. And presumably making a treasure here. Alright, so we'll deal four. And then pass a turn with all our options available. So if Skeletal Swarming shows up, we can bounce it. If Magda shows up... It's going to be a little more tricky since they can replay the Mascot Nexus. So we're point up to four treasures now. Two cards in hand. And there's a Skeletal Swarming. Alright. So we can let the opponent attack. Or just bounce the Skeletal Swarming now. So we bought ourselves a bit of time here, but it is going to come down again. Another Epiphany. Okay, okay. So... Step one, probably attack with a team, see how they block. But most likely I'm going to want to Epiphany. Right, Sentinel chumps, that's acceptable. Ok, 
Okay. We'll attack again. And... Probably fine to send the birds. And damage happens. And Epiphany again. Okay, so we can attack. Our opponent's creatures are gonna trample, so keeping back 1-1's one probably not gonna be all that helpful. Yeah, I think we're fine to just uh, attack here and see what the opponent does. Also could have activated Faceless Haven and then still activated the Sun Spirits with a Vigilant Haven that can still tap for mana. Would have been reasonable too. But if we can take out Merchant, the opponent's Skeletal Swarming is going to be less impactful as well. So we can level up here. And then let's do some math. So our opponent's taking six. If I level up here, that's not quite enough for lethal. Opponent's gonna have three creatures with skeletal swarming, so not enough to kill me on the way back. But I think dealing damage is fine. And then we'll just pass with both Haven and Behold the Multiverse available. And then our opponent packs it in. Alright, close one. Opponent had the combo, but we had just enough interaction to keep them off balance. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Turn one Augur, turn two Augur activate, turn three Ring activate. So plenty of card advantage coming our way. Shadow Skull smashing into a Lair of the Hydra, opponent foretells. Not sure what that could be. So do I want to play Spirit or another Augur here? Could play both, but I kind of want to start activating. Yeah, let's um, wait on the Spirit until we can level it up so we don't expose it to removal as much. Opponent is Teamer Colors, Crush the Weak. It's quite effective here. Well, at least next turn we get to refuel with Gravenlore. Could also level up Spirit twice. As our opponent goes for expressive iteration. So I don't mind a double level up. Or level up one, keep up divide by zero. Field trip we can let resolve, I think. Save this for a slightly more expensive card. Can even bounce Coma, which is otherwise uncounterable. Opponent gets environmental sciences. And keeps up two mana, it looks like. Alright, so we'll just hit for four, pass with all our mana available, and we can play accordingly. Now goes for sciences.
for Dolls and Nother card. Alright. Level up then, or we can cast Gravenlore, which is more mana efficient, although it can get countered by an opposing spell. Kind of prefer to level up, even if it's less mana efficient. Alright, so start by attacking. Don't want to play my land yet in case we pick up Faceless Haven. Alright, so we got plenty of bound spells. Put on discards outbursts to make a treasure. So if they go for like an Elrond's Epiphany, we can divide by zero it. Right, Koma, we can send packing. Opponent counters it, sure. Then we'll just bounce it with into the royal. And our opponent explodes. Would have been one mana short of double activating Ascendant Spirit to kill them here, but we were in a pretty decent position. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. A little bit slow to get started. But turn 2 for Telepiphany, turn 3 Ring. Hopefully pick up some of our 1-drops in the meantime. And looks like a party deck that we can maybe break up with Tempted. Turn 1 Ascendant Spirit, also a good draw. So turn 2 we might level that up instead. Double Archpriests. Alright, we'll just pass with 2 mana up, can bounce or level up, based on what lines up better. Uh -huh, the Bears of Lejara. Well, we can bounce the token that they get here. Do I want to level up first? So next turn it turns into a 4-4, although I could also steal it with Tempted once it does turn into a 4-4. That might be better. So then just level up and play Replicating Ring. Or I could turn this into a 4-4 to hold off the Archpriests. Yeah, it's also reasonable. Don't really need Ring to cast Tempted next turn. And now we can still block the Priest if they add one creature type. Aspirants could also be worth stealing. And take four. But yeah, stealing the token is probably better value since it has all creature types. It's very important for the opponent's party purposes. And then still gonna keep the Ascendant Spirit on defense. Another Archpriest, and our opponent explodes. Yeah, unfortunately they drew all four clerics here and didn't have another creature type to help them out. Alright, so we got to see our mono blue snow deck in action, and while Mordekainen didn't show up all that much, we still get to see the power of those dog tokens, especially in combination with Alrun's Epiphany if we get to take an extra turn and connect with a very large creature. And yeah, Elrond's Epiphany alongside Faceless Haven, probably the two cards that stood out the most as just being incredibly powerful, which is no surprise. So not the most competitive standard deck out there, probably going to be pretty weak against the more aggressive decks since we don't have any main deck sweepers, that's the downside of being one color. 
But the upside is that we get to play all those sweet blue cards and all the snow cards like Ascendant Spirit, which was pretty fun as well. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd. Thank you.